Hey, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Carolina Weather Authority's meteorologist Joshua Nagelberg, and I'm going to give you guys a video talking about the next potential tropical system. I know we're still dealing with Zeta. I'm doing this video a little bit earlier than usual due to the fact that we've already had some power interruptions here in North Carolina as Zeta is moving into the area and winds are gusting over 50 miles per hour. Um, so obviously Zeta stayed on the track that we expected it to. It did get stronger than expected yesterday in the northern Gulf, which is very unfortunate for Mississippi, Louisiana, and Alabama. Uh, but very quickly moving off of the uh, grid here as we get to tonight, so we don't have much more to talk about with Zeta. Hope you guys all stayed safe during that storm, and uh, certainly it was uncertain um, as to how strong it would get and if it was going to weaken or not. And um, if we've seen anything this year in 2020 in the tropics is that things have uh, the, the script has been rewritten. So having said that, we've got more tropical trouble to watch, believe it or not, as we head into November. And I, I don't want to say it's too early to speculate, because it kind of is, um, but definitely there are um, some signals we need to be alert for here in the southeastern United States, and in, especially in the Caribbean and the Yucatan once again, um, for yet another potential impactful storm as we head into the first half of November. So subscribe to my YouTube channel for the latest. I'm not going to have anything more on this probably until next week. I'm traveling this weekend, um, so I wanted to get this video out to you now, and I know it's probably going to change in the next five days, but uh, certainly there's some things to talk about. All right, so here's what we're looking at. The next name on the list is Ada. Um, too early to say if this is going to be a major hurricane or not, but it's in a spot in early November where the waters are warmer than average and the shear is lower than average where it could certainly become a hurricane. Um, the big question mark is going to be um, where this system develops and where it ends up going. And the models, of course, are not going to show us a lot of agreement this soon. Uh, so let's look at the weather pattern. Uh, we do have another region of high pressure that's going to build in from the southwestern United States behind this storm as it leaves over the weekend. And uh, next week, that high will be centered over northern Mexico and Texas to begin. And then eventually, it looks like it could build eastward again. And the big question mark is... How far east does it build in response to the next wave of storms crossing the United States? Um, it could be far enough south to keep this system on a westerly track and moving into Central America, and then we don't have anything to worry about after that. Uh, it's more of a problem for Central America, the Yucatan, maybe Cuba and Jamaica, uh, which, of course, have had a very wet October. However, um, I would love to say that's going to be the case in the United States, but we're seeing signals that maybe it's not. And this high could end up tracking eastward and building farther northeast. And it's going to be a warm, um, you know, after Election Day, it's going to be a warm pattern towards next weekend and into Veterans Day across the southeastern United States. And if that happens, then, of course, we have a lot more to be concerned with. So the area in red I have circled here is the likeliest area to have a tropical storm or even a hurricane um, later next week. After that, the areas in yellow are areas, I think, that need to at least be watching, which includes Central America, especially Honduras, Nicaragua, Belize, the Yucatan Peninsula, uh, maybe even El Salvador and Guatemala. Um, it includes the Central and Eastern Gulf of Mexico. It includes, of course, Cuba, the Caymans, Jamaica, Hispaniola, and even Puerto Rico, uh, the Bahamas, Florida, and even up the East Coast, uh, perhaps to the Carolinas by November 12th, 13th, and 14th. So obviously it's way too soon to make any sort of call at this point, but we're going to go ahead and take a look at some of the ensembles and at least some of the conditions that could favor some of these tracks. These are the three most likely tracks um, from what I'm seeing so far on early guidance. Of course, they will shift, um, but we definitely have some uh, algorithms and some logarithms that show us um, some of the uh, potential tracks here in November if something were to form, uh, which this would be a lot later than usual, but... With the water temperature still fitting a profile common of late September and early October, uh, we sometimes will look at signals for that. But we'll also look at some November storms in the past, uh, which could show us some potential. So Zeta is uh, moving quickly across the Carolinas and Virginia this afternoon and will be offshore. Uh, this is the next system we're watching. And uh, right now it has a 20% chance of developing between now and, say, Saturday night. Uh, but then a 60% chance of developing into our next name storm probably later in the weekend, perhaps as early as next week or uh, Election Day in the United States on Tuesday. Uh, but a 60% chance, you know, probably means we're going to have a named storm is what I'm thinking. And here's why. If you look at the satellite imagery, um, of course, this is Zeta zipping off through the Carolinas. We already see quite a bit of thunderstorm activity stretching from the Windward Islands and even the southeastern Caribbean back across the intertropical convergence zone into the middle Atlantic. Uh, the wave is probably right around here moving into the islands now. 
Um, there's also thunderstorm activity building again um, off the coast of uh, Nicaragua and Costa Rica. So there's already a bit of a spin in here. Obviously, things are pretty quiet where high pressure is built in across uh, the northern Caribbean islands and the southwest Atlantic in the wake of Zeta here. But as this tracks westward very quickly in the next couple of days, these two are going to join forces. And as wind shear uh, tends to weaken, it's high right now in here in the red area. But as we get into the green area where wind shear weakens, the pressure should lower once again. And we could see development somewhere here in the southwestern Caribbean. This is going to be farther south than the development we saw last week. Uh, with Zeta, which was in the Northwest Caribbean due to the trades that are going to be around the high pressure ridge. Uh, but this, uh, very poor wind shear right now should relax in about two to three days as this wave tracks westward. And so these two are going to combine into an area of relatively low shear and warm waters. And of course, we could see development once again. Here's a large region of high pressure aloft that's built in that I'm talking about. Um, here is a obviously unfavorable wind shear in the Northern Caribbean islands, but another, um, anti-cyclone building here um, off the or another cyclone uh, cyclonic flow I should say building here which could form another gyre uh, where we have once again tropical development in here uh, and here's a look at the steering flow a little bit lower and you can see the hostile wind shear in the mid levels of the atmosphere strong easterly trades uh, but then of course those back off as we get into the western Caribbean um, of course, this trough um, that's kicking Zeta quickly along is creating hostile environment in the northern Gulf of Mexico, and it will stay that way probably for several more days. Here's a look at the, um, actually, let me show you, I thought I had the water temperatures up here. Uh, maybe I don't have them. Sorry about that. Here's a look at the um, ensemble prediction system as we head into next week, and you can already see wetter than average conditions are likely here in the Western Caribbean and right up the East Coast. This is through the 9th and 10th. Um, so the ensemble is already showing uh, potentially tropical trouble here where we have all this moisture in the Western Caribbean, the Southeast Gulf, and into the Southwest Atlantic. These are areas of potential tropical trouble. This is a seven-day mean area of above average precipitation. So it is November, but it is showing active conditions in the tropics. Here is a look at the um, global on, or the uh, GFS um, parallel. Uh, we can see this is the track of Zeta, but it's showing another system entering the uh, Northwest Caribbean and becoming a hurricane in the Southwestern Gulf and then something to watch here in the Central Gulf. And I'm not saying Louisiana at this point, uh, maybe push more to the east and affect Florida or even may not even get this far north, but just something that we're watching at this point. Also showing a system trying to come up towards Puerto Rico and bending back towards the Turks and Caicos. So there may be two separate systems. Um, and we're seeing a track westward here towards um, the Central American nations and that's something to watch as well. Uh, so these are just possible locations over the next 16 days. A look at the ensemble prediction system shows development likely here between Jamaica and um, Hond Honduras and Nicaragua uh, by Sunday night and Monday and a westward moving low pressure wave and a track that could go southwest into Central America or it could kind of putz around here over the warm waters of the Western Caribbean, which of course would signal more potential trouble. Water, yeah, there's where I wanted to show you guys. Water temps are still quite warm down in here. They've cooled in the northern Gulf. Uh, but they're favorable still to um, allow a hurricane to develop and maintain its intensity in this region in here. And that includes the Western Atlantic over the Gulf Stream waters. It's been such a warm October. And of course, uh, the waters are purely warm enough for that to happen. Um, the ZRZ European shows a development here possible as we get to Sunday um, with this wave moving south of Jamaica and then continuing on a westward track. And at this point, we may have a landfall in Honduras and Nicaragua. Um, perhaps as a strong tropical storm or even a hurricane. Now, what it doesn't show you is that this could reemerge um, into the Northwest Caribbean and then have a right bend. And at this point, we've got tracks going through Cuba towards Florida or going over the Yucatan or through the Yucatan Channel. This opens up the eastern half of the Gulf of Mexico for another tropical system heading towards Veterans Day on the 10th and the 11th. And uh, Florida, you should be watching this. Carolinas might need to watch as well. Uh, but more, I think, Florida and Cuba and, oh, by the way, maybe another system behind it or um, the remains of this system spin out another system back over um, Hispaniola towards Puerto Rico. So we've got a lot of uncertain paths. Like I said, uh, we could have a track over here and then an uncertain future, which goes into the Gulf or just weakens and falls apart with another system behind it. And then we have to watch out in Florida and up the southeast coast or over uh, Jamaica and uh, the central parts of the Caribbean and the southern Bahamas. Um, the latest Euro um, does show um, all these tracks going into the Western Caribbean, and then we have less of an issue in six days, which would be a good thing. But 
Um, we've also seen the possibility that this ridge breaks down and pulls whatever's down here northward or a second system behind it, which would be theta, um, which could be an issue down the road. So we, of course, have a lot to talk about. It's really tough to say at this point what's going to happen. Um, here's some analogs of storms we've seen in the middle of November. This was Kate in 1985, was a hurricane crossing Cuba and going through the eastern Gulf. So what's happened before over these warm waters? And this is Ida, where we've had a system spend some time over Honduras and then come up the Yucatan Channel and threaten Louisiana and Mississippi. At this point, it was not tropical, though, uh, but of course did have impacts. And this was in the year, I believe, 2009. Uh, so we have seen some storms in November cause problems across um, Cuba, um, across the Yucatan, Central America, and even the northern Gulf Coast, as you've seen right here. Um, this could be the year where that happens again in 2020. We'll, of course, find out more. Um, but again, um, something we're going to have to watch here next week. Where does this high-pressure system go? Where does this wave end up going? How strong does it get? And then do we have um, a second system behind it that could form in the Central Caribbean? Or do we have a system here that's trackable that tries to pull a northward turn and cause potential problems down the road? That would be in the 7 to 14 of November time frame. So Eta is the next storm. The one behind it, Theta, is something that maybe could develop as well. Um, we'll have to see if this is one or two storms. Um, but certainly something we'll be watching here as the signals are positive for uh, more tropical trouble, at least over the first couple of weeks of November. All right, folks, thanks for joining me. Be safe. I hope your power stays on as I do with mine. And I uh, hope you guys have a great Friday and weekend coming up. Enjoy the cooler weather we're going to have and uh, catch your breath as we're not done yet here in the tropics. All right, folks, have a great day and God bless.